Hello everybody and welcome to The A-List. I'm George Connolly and today we have 2013 Boston Marathon runner and more importantly my uncle John Connolly. John thanks for being here. So glad you could uh, come and join us on the show. So uh, I understand that you're here to talk to us about your experience running in the 2013 Boston Marathon and being a participant but before we dive into that I'd like to talk to you about your experience running beforehand. So how long have you been running competitively? You know, George, I started running when I was kind of in my early 20s, and uh, I did running and triathlons, and then I kind of stopped doing it when I got married, started having kids and stuff. I took some time off, and I just swam and stayed competitive, but then I recently got back into running about, uh, th about three years ago and started doing uh, marathon uh, running again. Hmm. All right. How many marathons have you competed in since you began just recently, a few years ago? Uh, this was my uh, fourth again since in the last couple of years I've done. Fourth again? And I understand that the Boston Marathon, it's an extremely hard, like difficult marathon to get into to qualify for. So how did you qualify for the marathon? You know, I went out to Eugene, Oregon and ran a marathon out there with a friend of mine. And uh, I just had a time. It was a good, you know, good day, uh, a good flat course to run on. And I got in there. So I used my time for that. Mm -hmm. And had you, when you went out to Oregon, did you plan on qualifying for the Boston Marathon or was it more just like you wanted to run it and if you had gotten the time you would have qualified for it? Was it planned prior to going? You know, and it was in the back of my head that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I trained pretty hard for it so I really wanted to see if I could do it out there because it was such a flat course so I think and it was. How much downtime was there in between the boss, running the Boston Marathon and that marathon that you had ran to qualify for it? There's about, there's about a, really about a year, you know, but you get in and then you qualify, you have about a year, so it's quite a bit of time. You know, you just get in, you put your application, and then, you, then you're in. Mm -hmm. And how did, you, uh, how did you prepare for the Boston Marathon? I mean, it's a pretty intimidating <clears throat> thought to know that you're in with the elite, like, group of runners. We did, I did a lot of training on the lakefront. I did a lot of my long runs down there, and then I trained at the Morton Arboretum, which is out in Glen Ellen. It's a great place because it's lo got a lot of hills. And I did some training in uh, Barrington, uh, Barrington Hills. They have some good hills up there too. All right, and so let's flash forward now, about a year after all this preparation and stuff. The marathon's taking place on Monday. It's a huge event in Boston. And uh, when did you arrive to Boston for the event? We got there on Friday night, my wife and I. And then uh, we just had, you know, Friday night we got there and Saturday we just kind of uh, just took it easy, went to the expo. Um, that's a big deal out there to go to the expo. So I was there for probably five hours walking around out there yeah. on, that, on that Saturday. Yeah, I'll bet it was just crazy around there just being around everyone. Like, what was the atmosphere like? Because everyone takes it like such a big deal out there. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty electric atmosphere out there. It's really fun because everyone's really pumped up. And it's, it's a big deal because it's a big deal for Boston out there. Yeah, they've been doing it. It was the 117th, so yeah. Uh, how did you get ready? And while you were out there in Boston, like, did you not do any running? Did you try and stay off your feet? Did you eat certain foods? Like, what did you do to prepare? You know what? I just eat pasta the whole time I'm there pretty much, and I eat more than I usually do during the day, and I don't do any running. I try to stay off my feet, but it's a little hard because Boston mm -hmm. is such a great city to walk and hang around. But then it's mainly just that. And then Sunday I probably did more walking than I should have. Oh, yeah. So we walked around and did a lot of walking around the, you know, the Freedom Trail and everything. Yeah, it's interesting. Boston has a great history. I had to check that out. That's good. Uh, can you describe to me the morning of the marathon? Like, how were you feeling? What was what was going through your head? I bet it was pretty nerve-wracking, being that you've been preparing for over a year for it. Yeah, it was a pretty sleepless night, though. <laughs> they don't sleep a whole lot before that, especially this race. And we have to take a bus out to Hopkinton. It's a small town about a uh, half hour outside of uh, Boston. So that's what you do. You take the bus out there and we just, you know, met, I met up with a friend that was running also and we just walked to the bus and we took the bus out there and, uh, you know, just kind of wait around in the, uh, it's, it's called uh, like the village out there, Hopkinton. It's, it's really neat out there. Oh, that's cool. And uh, when you began running or even before you began running, did you have a certain time that you wanted to achieve or a goal that you had in mind for, uh, for the run? I did have a goal in my head that, uh, that I wanted to do. Um, but I actually changed my strategy the night before. I, t I spoke with a man that was had run 134 marathons and had run 27 wow. straight Boston marathons. Yeah, and he gave me some advice, advice on how to run the course. 
Yeah, and when you started running, did you feel as though you were going at a good pace, or did you feel that the course was sort of getting to you early on, or how did you feel? You know what, I just took it easy the first, really the first half of the marathon, because it was, once I started running, I started to take the whole race in, because it's pretty amazing how many people are out there, how many mm -hmm. kids are out there, and the support they give you, so it was kind of hard to really go, really try to go all out, just mm -hmm. I wanted to take it in, and I did it, you know, so it was good. Yeah, I also understand that uh, marker 17, mile 17, your wife Laura was waiting there for you, and also at marker 20, I was waiting there along with the rest of my immediate family. How did that feel? Did you get the extra boost from your family after you'd seen them? Oh, it was great. I, I, knew, you guys, I knew that you guys were all going to be there somewhere, but it's mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to find these people, you know, especially on the course, yeah. but it was great to see Laura and my wife. And then when I did find you guys at 20, it was really a big boost to you know, yeah. wave you guys around and have you run with me for a little bit. Yeah, I know. That was great getting to run down with you the street a little bit. Um, and I did see my daughter at 21 then, too. Oh, you did? Oh, man. At Heartbreak Hill, at the end of a Heartbreak Hill. Yeah, how was Heartbreak Hill? I mean, I understand that the Boston <clears throat> Marathon, it's a pretty, it's a really rough course, being that it's like for the elite runners and stuff like that. So how was that for you, the, the course, pretty much? You know what? It was, it was a lot tougher than I thought. You know, even trying to run hills around here to get ready for that heartbreak hill, it's a long, it's a long uphill, and it's uh, the downhills are even tougher going oh, after yeah. heartbreak hill. So it's it is heartbreak hill. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. Some people said it wasn't going to be, but it was harder than I thought. Mm -hmm. And what were the emotions going through you as you crossed the finish line? I mean, you had just prepared for like months, even like years for this marathon. So what were the emotions like? Yeah, it was it was pretty neat, you know, to, to go through to go through that and just when you when you turn down Boylston Street and you just hear the the roar, it's like a stadium yeah. crowd. It's just it's hard to describe, especially yeah. when you look up and you see, you know, the John Hancock sign that you're finishing. It's it's really a big deal for anyone that's doing marathons to do mm -hmm. it. You know, they that's kind of the that's it for running. Yeah, it's that, there's almost no more you can go. Uh, and when did you receive this medal? You know what, I received this medal, um, when you cross the finish line, you get wrapped up in your aluminum, kind of, a, it's a wrap to keep you warm, and it was pretty chilly to, when we finished, and then you wait in line, and they give it to you as you go through the chute, and they give you your bananas and water and everything else, and then you kind of just try to get yourself straight, because you're kind of yeah. a little out of sorts there. Yeah, I know, I can, can only imagine what you're feeling like. And uh, after all this, after you just ran 26.2 miles, you're, you go to your hotel room and you hear these explosions. What, explain to me what that was like. Yeah, it was pretty crazy because my wife had just told me to put my, my metal around my neck and I was really kind of out of it. And she said, I lay down on the bed for a minute and all of a sudden we heard this just boom. We were a, we were a block away from the, from, the, uh, from the finish line, so we were right there. And then we heard another one. It was just a really loud, loud noise and my wife just said that was more than... There was some, there's something else going on. So we got really nervous. She said, grab yeah. your stuff. And we just ran down the stairs. And yeah. it's not easy going downstairs after running a marathon either. I, so yeah, we were kind of even like. understand how that felt. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you feel the explosions themselves being that you were only a block away and the explosions were that big? Yeah, we did. I mean, you really could tell that it was more than fireworks. I mean, it was really yeah. loud and it was 10 seconds after. So it happened very quick. So it was like. So your initial reaction, what was that like just. Were you scared, nervous, like didn't really know what was going on? Like what was that like? I really thought that it was, it was something like another 9-11. I, I, uh, yeah. We were really, really nervous. I mean, kind of like what, what's next? Because yeah. it was really scary to go down the hallway and see what was going mm -hmm. on. It was a mess, like chaos everywhere. Yeah, especially when you don't have TVs around you. You're not like tuned in, so you have no idea if there could be more attacks or anything like that. Were you nervous there were going to be more attacks? Yes, because we, got, we went down there in the hallway and... Um, there was, you know, girls crying. They couldn't find their parents. I mean, there's just a lot going on in the street. And then we went back upstairs to yeah. see what was going on. And then they evacuated our hotel. And that's when we got real nervous because we thought there was something in the hotel. Yeah. After you had uh, left your hotel, where did you go? Because you were told that you had to evacuate. We actually were just told to leave. So I put my jacket on and my hat and we had nothing else. And we went... They just kept moving us down the street, everybody, and it was just like we didn't know where to go, so they kept pushing us away. The police didn't know where to go, so we walked almost five miles to get to a God. mile to a friend's house. Walking five miles after you just ran 26.2 miles of the Boston Marathon. And uh, what was the atmosphere like after that, after, like the next day? Because I understand that you stayed overnight Monday and you were leaving Tuesday. So what was it like in the city? Like, What was the feeling? 
it was just real somber. It was just Newberry Street's a really fun street to be on. There's a lot yeah. of like shops and it's a real like fun place to be and everyone wears their jacket and their medal and everyone's just kind of walking up and down. There was cameras everywhere. People were getting interviewed and everything was blocked off still. So it was just, every, and a lot of stores were closed. So it was just real like surreal. Like you didn't know what to do. You didn't want to celebrate. You didn't wear your jacket or your medal even. Yeah, I can only imagine what that feels like after you run one of the most like prestigious marathons and you aren't allowed to represent anything, but obviously it's out of respect and stuff like that. So how was it leaving that day on Tuesday? Was there any complications because it's like nobody knew what was happening, nobody knew like if anything else was going to like occur? You know, it, it was just kind of weird as far as like the, when, we, when we did leave and we went to the airport, there was really no problems. There was so much security, but everything was just so, it was just so like kind of quiet and no one was talking, but the everything just was smooth and we got out right on time and I think they had so much security mm -hmm. that there was no problems, but just really quiet. Yeah, with you and Laura being there so close to it and experience it pretty much like firsthand, I mean, with it only being three weeks removed from the incident, how have you and Laura been coping with it and like recovering from it? You no, know, at first it was just kind of weird. My, my daughter, Madeline, who was out there visiting a friend at BC, she was having a tough time sleeping. She was having some nightmares. And my wife probably had like a, a delayed reaction about a week later, really started having some bad nightmares and stuff, mm -hmm. just thinking about it a lot. Cause it was really weird to see, you know, what you went through, you know, mm -hmm. there was just a lot going on. I think it's finally started hitting you. But uh, mm -hmm. I just was just constantly watching the TV like everyone else. And it just, you know, started hitting me a, about a week later too. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine what that feels like. Uh, have you ran since the incident or? Yeah, I started much? running last week and mm -hmm. then I ran a five mile race yesterday down oh, the yeah. lakefront. So I'm, you know, glad to be running again. Yeah. It's just the best way to get, kind of get your mind off it and stuff. Yeah, did you feel like you needed to take some time off from running just because it had been so recent or did it not really affect you in that sort of way? It didn't really affect me that much. You know, it's kind of like the best thing to do. I talked to a, you know, a few people that have run it that ran Boston. They were like, the best thing to do is just to get out and run, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you just wanted to get out and do it again. Yeah. And how often do you relive that day? How often do you just take a moment out of your day and just think about what happened, like what had occurred? You know, it's funny. I almost think about it every day. I mm -hmm. mean, some something during the day or whatever. It really yeah. it was. It was pr a pretty tough, uh, tough thing to go through. Even yeah. though we didn't, we weren't. You know, we didn't affected by it. But it's just weird to think that all that stuff happened. Yeah. And as far as future plans go, what are your plans for running in the future? Like, are you going to keep participating in marathons, or was the Boston Marathon it for you? No, I'm definitely, um, I'm going back to Boston next year. Um, I think I requalify for my time, so I'm definitely going back next year with my friend and hopefully my wife, and we'll see who else can go, you yeah, know, maybe the rest of the can, family. Yeah, make it out there with you but, again. But uh, I'm going to do that, um, and I'm going to do New York this uh, November, too. So I got in, in, into New York um, last year, and then Sandy hit, so I haven't had very good oh, luck yeah. with uh, hurricanes lately. Wow, just these marathons are getting to you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully we can make it out there with you next time. And uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, let's go and wrap it up for us today. From all of us here at RBTV, I'm George Conley. Thanks for watching.